Hi, everybody. Oh, it's June 17, 2021. Sorry to bring back some bad memories. But remember this? Very important. You'll see how it's all connected to today, what we are living. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. And unfortunately, there are people like that. And he has lifted them up. He has given voice to their websites that used to only have 11,000 people, now have 11 million. He tweets and retweets. They're offensive, hateful, mean-spirited rhetoric. Now some of those folks, they are irredeemable, but thankfully they are not America. But the other basket, the other basket, Okay, that was purposeful. That was not an off-the-cuff remark. I'm sure a lot of you understand that. Hear the response from Americans sitting in the audience. Oh, they thought that was hysterical. They applaud. Okay, remember this? Just a recent purposeful statement. Will Vice President Harris be on your ticket? I would fully expect that to be the case. She's doing a great job. She's a great partner. She's a great partner. And do you believe you'll be running against former President Trump? Oh, come on. I don't even think about it. I don't have, I have no idea. I have no idea whether it'll be a Republican Party. Do you? Okay. I have been for a very long time, warning Republicans, warning conservatives, please don't identify yourself in public because the war, you're being used as the enemy. Now, all of us are the enemy. Anyone who speaks against the official narrative, anyone who exposes the truth of what is going on in our country, anybody exposes the evil that, and the treason that has taken place with these people. Hillary, this guy, another guy named Barack. Okay. No, I am not a Republican. Let me say this very clearly. Get out of your dichotomous thinking. They have shaped your mind if you think that everybody in this country is either on the left or the right. How about outside it all? Now, it's obvious that the left is filled with the commies, the communists who are taking over our country. You that might be rolling your eyes, you're ignorant. You are not informed about what is taking place, and I hope that you get informed now. Okay, I don't even know if there's going to be a Republican Party. Our revolution chair said it might take random deaths to beat the right. List of supporters includes the squad. Ah, the squad. Who's the squad? Those fabulous women, the newbies in Congress, that, wow, don't they get an awful lot of attention from mainstream media like AOC? The, well, they call themselves Democratic Socialists. I know AOC does. I'm not sure of the others. And Omar, um, I can't remember. Um, I want to say Rashid. I can't remember the names. Okay. This, uh, if you have not seen this 
uh, Project Veritas video, which was posted last year, um, October 2020. Why don't we see anything about the militia on the left? Antifa doesn't exist. That's only a myth. So forget about Antifa. And BLM is just a peaceful movement, and they really just would like police brutality to stop. Stop shooting black people as if as if they don't shoot white people. But that's another video. All right. Project Veritas. Listen to this. And I want to make this point very loudly and very clearly. I, I said it nicely before, but I'll say it more curtly now. 2020 is a political revolution. I am going to do everything morally acceptable to win. I will lie, I will cheat, I will steal, because that's morally acceptable in this <laughs> political environment. Absolutely. We are pirates on a pirate ship, and, and, and we have a bright future ahead of us, or we have Mad Max. I don't want to, I got an awesome war rig, but I don't want to be driving around the apocalyptic wasteland. Let's bring in a better future, and I will, I will, knock people down the stairs as long as they don't die <laughs> to, to make this happen. This was taped last January, and just two months later, violent riots broke out in the streets and calls to defund the police began. Our undercover cameras recorded Jacks talking about justified violence to gain complete political control. But when I look at... When I look at everything, I mean, again, I, I believe there is absolutely justified violence in all sorts of circumstances. So I do think there needs to be a militant group, and I love Antifa for that reason. I love that there's... You, you always have to have somebody that's willing to hold up the flag and say, no, this is the line in the sand, and we're the ones holding that line. They're not good at uh, peace and quiet, though. Yeah, no, they're yeah. not. But they, but, they, but they ain't stabbing mother like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to, though, because they used to stop. See? Yeah. And that's all we got to say. No. Guillotines. Motherfucker. That's all we got to say. But option A, what I'm proposing. Option two, slicey boys. What are your choices? Which one do you want? Wait, sorry. What do you mean guillotines? Just like, just like you said, the unions have power because they used to stab motherfuckers. They used to bury people beneath a giant stadium. We have power. Populist uprisings have power because we used to kill people. We used to hang people from gas stations. We used to cut off their heads. So we don't have to actually cut heads. We just have to say that we're willing to cut heads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody wants a slicey boy. <laughs> Nobody wants one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want one. No, nobody wants that. So you think saying is it enough? I, I, I think I think I think that the right wing has a, has a monopoly right now on strong violent rhetoric, and I think they underestimate how many people on the left are organized, trained, armed, and ready to go should they decide to do their shit. Okay, now, wow, uh, talk about Americans not being on the same page at all. Uh, really? Is it is it the right wing that are strong with um, their, you know, uh, violent rhetoric? I, you know, I, that's not my perception. And he loves Antifa, right? Um, and he's talking about holding up the flag. They're burning the flag. And Antifa is, well, it's just about causing chaos. And yeah, if you don't agree with them, then you're a racist or a white supremacist or Hitler or whatever, the misogynist and all of the name calling. Um, you can't have rational discussion with any of these people. Now, I want to point out that, you know, if you listen to this, uh, you get that you know, this guy 
is really talking about uh, getting rid of the billionaires. And um, you see he has a Bernie a Bernie um, button, um, which to me uh, signifies people who want socialism. They don't want freedom. They don't want capitalism uh, as, well, capitalism as it was intended, but didn't quite work out that way because our economy has been rigged for a very long time. All right. So, um, we never hear about these guys, right? Project Veritas, you know, exposed them. How come they're not, you know, on uh, mainstream media? Why aren't they reported as one of those domestic extremist terrorist groups that our fabulous Biden administration continues to show us they are going after the right? They are going after the right. You support Trump. You were one of those QAnons. Uh, you are the um, you're the the enemy that they have posed, and many are already suffering the consequences. You know that violent summer. Violent summer. Looks like we're going to have a violent summer. Are they purposefully, purposely trying to make the streets of America abnormally violent in the summer of 2021? I'll link below. You can read the article. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Corporate media repeatedly using the word violent to describe what our summer is going to be. Now, um, don't know if you know about this. June 15, just a couple of days ago, this came out. Background press call by senior administration officials on the national strategy for countering domestic terrorism. I will say this again. You know, right after January 6, Biden administration uh, will... Uh, draw up a commission and talk about whether or not, study whether or not, you know, all of the crap that they do in Washington, D.C. that amounts to nothing, but more and more of our freedoms taken away um, on domestic terrorism. Will they pass the legislation? More legislation. They don't need any more legislation on domestic terrorism because, well, right after 9-11, they sure did, boom, 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 put out legislation on domestic terrorists, right? Uh, gave us plenty examples of who they considered those domestic terrorists, anybody who goes against the official narrative, Anybody that is uh, pro-Constitution, pro-Second Amendment, uh, yeah, the list is long. Okay, I want to just, I'm going to play a video, um, several videos actually, to show you what mainstream media is saying about this, the difference between, you know, RT and uh, well, I don't know, NBC or CBS that I have pulled up, but there is a difference. I'm not saying that RT doesn't put out the propaganda as well, but RT puts out more truth, kind of like Fox News in comparison to the, all other mainstream media networks. Not saying uh, that I'm buying into any of them. Okay, so don't you presumptions. <gasps> They're so fast. They, they just enter people's minds and they screw things up and they eat away all intelligence and then they spew it out. Oh, so you're, uh, please. All right. Um, we've got to stop that. We really do have to stop that. So, yeah, baseline study, the the findings of this study have come out. The study released in March 
and it found that domestic violent extremists motivated by a range of ideologies pose an elevated threat to our country in 2021 with racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists. Uh, specifically those who espouse the superiority of the white race. I have yet to hear anyone, anyone espousing the superiority of the white race. Oh, boy. Uh, we all, as Americans, regardless of color, have been so friggin' abused and demeaned and demoralized that we're all just, you know, into our own little lives, just trying to survive each day. That's pretty much America now. It's a lie, okay? Abject, abject lie, outright lie, but they keep it up. Now, what was January 6th about? Was that about race? Ethnicity? Or was it about oh, politics? Biden, Trump, election rigged? It wasn't about race. But I guess that's, that's what they're folding in, right? Okay. Anti-government militia violent extremists posing the most lethal threat. And it ain't that group that we got to see, you know, Project Veritas. Uh-uh, not this one. Those proud boys. You know, the militia's on the right. On the right. Now, I've posted many videos, and the reason why is because I hope that Democrats begin to uh, use their brain again and start recognizing that we're all being manipulated to hate one another, and it really needs to stop because what is very hard to take is to see how easily uh, Americans are manipulated. Every generation, every generation. And we've got to stop being manipulated because we're going to have a very violent summer. Unless Americans wake up. So this study found that violent extremists, to promote, again, the superiority of the white race, have the most persistent transnational connections and may be in frequent contact with violent extremists abroad. Wow. Well, wait a second. However, uh, this study did not find a robust, r robust nexus between domestic terrorism and foreign actors. Okay, fine. Doesn't matter because Americans just keep reading, keep reading. They think that they're reading. They think that they're, I don't know, their brain is processing information and it's not. Okay, so th that to me is a, well, very quick um, turnaround. You know, second paragraph to third paragraph. But today, the problem is an inside out, not an outside in problem. They're going after the right strategy. All right, they outlined their strategy. I will link below to it if you want to read the details. I did, and I don't want to bore you with them. They have four pillars. That's their strategy. It's a four-pillar strategy. Our goal is to enhance domestic terrorism analysis and improve information sharing through outlaw enforcement, federal, state, local, tribal, territorial level, and where appropriate private sector partners an increase of surveillance. Do they have to increase it? Probably not. But Americans still believe that, uh, whatever the hell they believe, we're so delusional, it's frightening. The second pillar involves the prevention of domestic terrorism recruitment and mobilization to violence. We will work with communities infiltration 
of communities, and it's also a usurpation of local and state law enforcement, bringing more and more central power to the feds. Uh, Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Defense and the Justice Department, they're all involved. Department of Defense incorporating training for service members. They want to weed out the radicalized American servicemen and women. Any of you uh, Trump supporters? Any of you have spoken about your support for Trump because they want to improve public awareness as well as improve an avenue for family members or friends or coworkers to rat on you. Improve public awareness, which means more and more propaganda fed to the American people about how dangerous, how dangerous are these domestic terrorists. They will always show you maybe a picture or a brief shot of what took place January 6 to get into everybody's minds. It's the Trump supporters. It's the Trump supporters, no matter how much evidence comes out that it was not. Yeah, maybe a few Trump supporters, but it was Antifa. It was BLM. Oh, it was our fabulous FBI. All you need to do is look into the evidence and stop listening to mainstream media poisoning your brain. You know what? Baby boomers especially. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Fried eggs, remember? that commercial? Okay. Start using your brain again. Do some research. And you know, the more you keep your brain active, the less likely you will come down with dementia. So there. Okay. Just exercise it. So uh, yeah, the Stasi state thickens. It involves this strategy. It involves creating contexts in which those who are family members or friends or co-workers, yeah, they need to know where those pathways are and the avenues to raise their concerns and seek help for those who they have perceived to be radicalizing and potentially radicalizing towards violence. How many of you have family members who are on the left? who don't like your opinion very much, be careful. I would suggest, and this is unfortunate because it breaks down trust in the family if there is a family out there. Actually, there are. I know. I have several subscribers who have families intact, and they actually like one another, and they trust one another. Most don't. So I recommend you not talk your family members who are on the left, because unfortunately, they are crazy. Of course, efforts to address online terrorist recruitment, oh, more and more surveillance, surveillance in real life, surveillance online. They're also joining the Christchurch call to action to eliminate terrorist and violent extremist content online. Yeah, all of those mass shootings, you know, these events. Well, we, we did our best to try to get uh, our fellow Americans to just look into how governments, militaries, were involved in those false flags. But now everything is coming to a head. I mean, we are speeding into a chaos like, well, I can't believe how fast it all came about. So international partnership between governments and technology companies, 
that works to develop new solutions to eliminating terrorist content online. This is also the New World Order. That's right. Coordinate, usurp all power, bring it into central, into a central power. Um, So again, working, bringing all the law enforcers and intelligence agencies and departments like Justice and Homeland Security and Defense and FBI and we have a special, a, we've got a really special responsibility to ensure that we address the possibility of insider threats. Antifa doesn't exist. BLM, not a threat. They're fighting the white supremacy that I guess just has really taken over our country again. I, I don't know how it happened. I didn't, well, I don't see it. I don't feel it. I guess it just, whatever these uh, treasonous subhuman types want to say exists, then it exists. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. Voila. As easy as that. You know, considering everything that's happening today, uh, much bigger threats like the economy collapsing, and it is. Oh boy, is it. Uh, we're going to be looking at skyrocketing prices of everything, supply chain disruption that is oh, it's happening, it's happening, and it's just going to get worse and worse. Um, the race divide that has been, yeah, uh, engineered, socially engineered, and, well, too bad Americans just bought it all. Um, weather wars, people just being destroyed by weather. Um, but, hey, <clears throat> it's the white supremacy. And the biggest threat is against... It is is Republicans. Now, those who just don't really have a functioning brain anymore, they might think, oh, it's the militia, it's these really... I, I don't know what they could think because it's clear that this is left versus right, yet another divide and conquer, that unfortunately is so successful, and I can't stand how successful it is, but it is, so that's what we have to deal with, you know. The, uh, look, we've got cartel in our country now, the Mexican cartel in our country. We, we uh, Once again, Biden opens up the border uh, with, uh, oh, now we're going to be flying children from Central America on taxpayer dollars. My God, help me. Okay, yeah. Oh, flying children from Central America. Children who, well, teenagers up to the age of 18 to the United States. I guess there were just too many complaints about that long trek. Flying them right in. Well, I guess that's another video. But is that not a threat? Oh, I'd say it's a big threat. When you have gangs coming over, when you have people who are coming over from all over the world, by the way, all over the world, not just um, you know Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico. And, no, not just from El Salvador. All over the world. Uh, two, I believe, just crossed the border who are on terrorist watch lists. Catch and release means they come across the border. Uh, they get processed by, you know, give us your name and whatever. And then they get a court date and they're released. Catch and release. Operating again. It operated during the Obama years. And wow, what a huge percentage of those who just don't show up for their court date posted a video, I don't know, a month ago. Uh, well, we've lost track of an awful lot who have crossed the border. They are setting us up deliberately for 
a whole lot of war and chaos and violence during the summer. So I would think that an open border allowing terrorists to come in, not saying that there are not people who are fabulous and innocent and not the criminals, not saying that, but a whole lot of the drug traffickers and the sex traffickers and the child traffickers and the terrorists and the Mexican cartels. And if you know what the cartels are doing to innocent people in Mexico, you sure as hell don't want them here. But they're here now. Thank you, U.S. government, for keeping us safe from those Republicans. Okay, that's how insane our country is. Summit as headline news. Back home, there have been some pretty big developments. The U.S. government has launched a war on terror at home. The first ever national strategy for fighting domestic terrorism has been rolled out, and white supremacy is listed as the number one threat. The two most lethal elements of the domestic violence extremist threat are racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists and militia violent extremists. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Biden is all in on this one, and he says it will help reunify the country. This is a project that should unite all Americans. Together we must affirm that domestic terrorism has no place in our society. We must work to root out the hatreds that can too often drive violence. In the name of unity, Biden is urging Americans to report on their friends and family so that they can be de-radicalized. And Americans are already doing that. Over 100,000 pieces of digital media have already been provided to the FBI by the U.S. public in order to help them investigate the January 6th Capitol riots. Those who are family members or friends or co-workers know that there are pathways and avenues to raise concerns and seek help for those they have perceived to be radicalizing and potentially radicalizing towards violence. Biden says that he plans to work with social media companies to help fight disinformation and to educate the public. We are working with the social media companies to be able to better identify the false narratives, to be able to identify disinformation and misinformation, and really educate the American public. Now, Biden insists this will not target speech, but how does that work when policing social media and labeling certain ideas as dangerous is already part of the plan? Extremely insulting to many groups of people in this country. Uh, and the timing is interesting because uh, they said uh, Biden's administration has said that white supremacy, whatever that is, is the greatest domestic terrorism threat in this country. We can only assume what they're talking about is Trump supporters. They're talking about working class people of all colors, by the way, and all sexualities and what have you, uh, who kind of look like the people we saw at the Capitol on January 6th. So the Biden administration, of course, doesn't have any interest in stopping political extremism. Uh, more because he would have mentioned Antifa and he would have mentioned the uh, more violent elements of Black Lives Matter. There might be some interesting legal issues that come up. Should big tech be reporting people that it thinks are white supremacists or white nationalists? Something tells you they probably already are. I mean, the, the big tech works so closely with the U.S. government and with the Democrat Party and any liberal institution. Who knows what information they're sharing and who knows what they're doing behind the scenes? One of those dangers, an, an innocent person being persecuted because they said some, you know, uh, unsavory things on the Internet or drunk at a bar or something. Right. Uh, and I think we will see a lot of those cases. Now, the original war on terror did not work out so well. Terrorist groups have gotten bigger and stronger since it began. Many are looking on and wondering exactly how successful we should expect these new operations launched within U.S. borders to be. Caleb Moppin, RT, New York. Okay, well, they're going after the right. Now, they have been pretty successful so far. I'm going to end this video right here. I want you to uh, take a look at this. And, they, they, you know, they bring up January 6th. Then they talk about white supremacy. That's our biggest threat. January 6th, QAnon, 
white supremacy. That's, I'm sorry, all of you who fell for the QAnon, that was a wow, wow, big sigh up. And, you know, if you were um, part of throwing in your comments on those Q pages or whatever, yeah, they've got you. And, um, you know, the, the, the amount of mainstream media reporting on, you know, the uh, Q, the violence of Q, well, let me, here, let me just play a few minutes of this. As QAnon fizzles, Department of Homeland Security warns conspiracies followers pose a new threat. Yes. That was on the 15th MSNBC. An urgent new warning on QAnon this morning with the FBI and Homeland Security saying some followers of this bananas conspiracy theory, many of whom were involved in the Capitol insurrection, could target Democrats and other political opponents for more violence. It comes as out of the White House, you've got the first ever national strategy for countering domestic terrorism, a new plan to try to beef up what the federal government's doing in response to this, something virtually every law enforcement agency says is not a new threat, but something that's just grown over the last few years. Let's bring in two of our best on these beats, NBC's Ben Collins and national security correspondent Ken Delaney. And so, Ben, um, you're talking about this FBI warning about potential real-world violence from QAnon followers. Uh, that's exactly what this strategy is hoping to demobilize. Yeah, uh, I mean, in this report, it, it talks about the shift from digital soldiers to real-world conflict. Now, digital soldiers is an expression coined by Mike Flynn, a big QAnon guy who's big yeah. pushing that conspiracy theory and ally of the president. Um, and he talked about needing digital soldiers to fight basically this big culture war uh, over the next few years. Uh, but QAnon has unraveled. Q, the, the secret government insider who is allegedly at the, the center of this thing, who isn't really a government insider, by the way, um, hasn't posted in over six months. So as people start to realize that they got conned here, they're going to try to find rationalizations around that. And that's what this report talks about. It talks about the idea that while they lose hope, other groups come in. They say domestic uh, violent extremist organizations have tried to recruit these people who've lost hope in QAnon, but still want to fight those same battles, still want to say, hey, the world is run by these satanic cannibals and there's a great reset happening and something, something Tony Fauci and all this stuff. But they don't want to give up the ghost on that. They want to radicalize them. And that's what white supremacist groups have kind of like dived in on places like Telegram to go recruit those people. Ken, there's All right. So. Did you hear all of that? Um, it was an anonymous, started by some anonymous uh, person who then was, I guess, exposed as a government insider. But that guy knows that, well, it wasn't a gov government insider. Um, and, uh, well, he knows all about QAnon. And he knows now that real wa world violence will be happening okay all they need to do is start some violence with some guy who's really not a trump supporter but that guy happens to be wearing a maga hat and voila they have their real world violence call them a white supremacist this tool you know this treasonous tool right here White supremacist, white supremacist, white, oh, QAnon, Q, oh, the Trump supporters, oh. Go after. Go after the Republicans that, oh, I don't even know if there's going to be a Republican Party. And after all, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it funny? Deplorable. They're the racists. They're the this. They're the that. This sick, narcissistic, just Okay, I, I hear a lot going through my brain describing her, but all right, there's a lot of play on QAnon, on QAnon just fizzling and the violent uh, groups that are trying to recruit the QAnon members over to their side. I am very worried. 
about my subscribers who still subscribe to The Matrix, believing that Trump is going to save the day or the Republicans somehow are going to... No, it's not happening. It's not going to happen. Things are getting out of hand. The lies are outrageous. The violence is coming. So be careful because we do not have enough Americans who can think anymore. Even those who still think they're not doing a thing, sitting back, letting these people bring about their agendas with success, and that's what I can't stand. <laughs>